Hello, my name is Hoon Kang and welcome to my final project, study in the optical character recognition of printed characters focused on electric meter readings. Currently, utility workers have a need to be physically present when reading the meters or there are errors when the meter readings are provided over the phone verbally. This process increases vehicle and human foot traffic. And again, it creates additional errors, which may be unnecessary if this process was automated. So I'm hoping the solution will help optimize this process. The data set comes from the Robotic Vision and Imaging Laboratory from Brazil. It's about five gigabytes and you need to submit an application and a signed agreement that this is for research purposes. Uh, once you receive the data set, you'll see it contains about 2,000 high resolution images uh, from warehouses within the energy company um, located in Brazil. And I actually went ahead and cropped 1,200 of the 2,000 images manually using Microsoft Paint 3D because I wanted to focus on just the meter readings for training purposes. And you can see here uh, an example of the original image and on the right, the cropped uh, image where it's just focusing on the meter, the meter readings for training purposes. And the new distribution of the data set is uh, 800 images for training, 200 images for validation, and 200 images for testing. In preparing the data, um, the, each of the images have, were converted to grayscale. The ratio of the image was reduced by a factor of four. And in the um, notebook, it's going to show, the variable name is going to show as downsample factor. And this is to reduce the input size into the neural network for faster processing or faster, more efficient processing. The unique list of digits associated with this are is zero to nine because obviously it's just digits. And um, below you see a sample of what would be fed into the neural network. Um, and again, here is a, just a simple calculation of the width of the image of 30 using the down sample uh, factor of four. And that two is just the bias that I added. And all the images have the total of five digits uh, to be read from the meters. Now, uh, just give you an overview on the network. It uses a CTC loss slash operations, uh, which is a convolutional neural network to get the sequencing of features and then uses a recurrent neural network to propagate that information through the sequence. It also uses a bi-directional GRU or gated recurrent unit, which helps decide which information should be passed and which information should be forgotten uh, to help with the vanishing gradient issue. And that's important here because um, the loss here is actually calculated by the negative, negative logarithm of the probabil probability. And when you're dealing with logarithms, you don't want to have a zero, uh, which is why this GRU is important. Here and below is just the initial uh, network parameters that were used uh, in the training. Now, uh, I'll go next into the uh, technology overview and review. Uh, now, you're going to want to import all of these libraries. Uh, some of the uh, modules that I want to focus is this Cairo CFFI, uh, as well as the edit distance. You can do a pip install for these two. And then uh, you also have to do a pip install uh, or, or a conda install of Cairo for this to work. And this is outlined in the full report. Um, now, in turn, I know I went over some of the data preparation pre-processing, I'm just extending that. Um, this is where you set the train validation and test path, which will be applied to the rest of the program below. So it's very important you get that path right here. I started the session here uh, in terms of the, the, the TF session because this will be later used when uh, injecting the prediction test images into the, the layers and then getting the output of the prediction themselves. Now, this is just an initial attempt to automate the cropping process uh, from my initial analysis. And uh, when I did that, it just didn't work out well because the meters came in all different shapes and sizes and, and flavors. So it, it just, the initial accuracy from training did not do well, which is why I, I went ahead and did uh, manual cropping for 1200 images. Uh, the next step here, you can skip because I've, uh, what this does is actually removes 800 of the 2,000 images 
and it randomly shuffles them before it removes them. So I can crop the remaining um, 1200 images. But since I've already done that uh, for you, we can skip this step. And this is just an output of the initial results from the deletions uh, after randomly shuffling them. The next step here um, creates two directories. One is the image, which is where the images will go. Second is the ANN directory, which, is, which will both be located within the root train path directory or folder. And the ANS is short for annotations, which contains the truth labels. Uh, and the reason I had to do it this way is because the original truth labels from the images came as a text file. And I had to go ahead and con extract the readings and convert the readings into a JSON file and dump it in there and then have that copied into the an or annotation folder uh, for this training to work. And this process is applied to both the, uh, the validation and testing, it's just repeated. So next is uh, just initial view of the specs of the images. And, um, and, and it's something I went over before, along with a sample of what will be put into the neural network, as you can see here. And um, again, it was, it's, converted to grayscale and then the ratio is uh, downsampled by a factor of four for uh, faster and more efficient uh, processing during the training uh, as well as input into the neural network. And this is just the function uh, for the text image generator. It's not actually generating the text, but it's providing the text in batches used for training from your train folder or wherever you decide um, you want to extract the images from, including the test and validation. And that can be specified, which I'll show you down the line. Now, here we start the initial run of training as well as the results of that. And um, again, here is where you calculate the CTC operation and the CTC loss, uh, which again, I mentioned is the opposite, uh, the negative logarithm of the probability. And here is the training function with the initial set of parameters that was used with a image height of 64 and the width of 128 which again is uh, down factored uh, by four. And you can see here, um, it uses CNN, RNN, as well as the GRU I, I previously mentioned uh, in helping to prevent, it's a bi-directional GRU in helping to prevent uh, vanishing gradient issues as well. Um, this initial run is for 20 epics and uh, below are the results. And you can see here, um, the initial accuracy I got uh, from the training run is 21%. Now, when I first saw this, I was very excited because I initially got uh, accuracy of zero using the original images before I cropped them. Uh, so this, is, th this was really exciting for me. Um, this decode here, uh, you want to run to decode or, or uh, when you want to make predictions uh, from your test images, which is why the function is here and you, you would probably want to run this. So I, I think the initial accuracy was good. At least it was good for me, but then I think there's definitely room to improve. Um, so what I, and below is a sample of uh, the run from the initial image, uh, the initial training. And here you can see uh, as an example, um, the true label is all zeros and you can see that. However, it predicted a nine on the second digit. And if you can see here, there seems to be a glare of some sort which is maybe why it got confused as a nine. And on, you can see here in terms of the activations that it seemed to have a stronger probability on the, the digit nine, but it also picked up on the digit zero, but it's just that the higher probability went to nine. And it, it just requires improvements in training. So that's understandable. And these are just similar examples um, of what you're seeing in terms of the activations. Now, Based on the initial run, I went ahead and experimented through trial and error in trying to optimize the parameters and these are the results. The two main parameters that I felt uh, dramatically increased the accuracy were it was the RNN size and the, count, the kernel size. And I, I believe this is probably because the images were high resolution even when cropped. So we needed a bigger, um, bigger filter or flashlight to be able to capture all that. To accurately read the image. So I increased it to from 3.3 to 6.6 for the kernel size, and then the RNN size 
I increased from 512 to 1024, and it had a dramatic increase uh, in the accuracy. Okay, so just going back to the, um, the program, uh, I after I obtained uh, those optimal parameters through trial and error, and I ran the same training uh, and nothing was changed, but this time I increased uh, I, I decreased the accuracy by two because I just wanted to go a little bit faster just to see what the results were. And the results were very promising, actually. So after running with 18 uh, epics, uh, I got a score of 51%, as you can see here. And of course, you, you can probably tell I'll be jumping for joy. Um, and here are just some of the samples. Um, and I try to look at what, which ones were not correct or, or the predictions were kind of off. And you can see here, uh, this one, it, it was in the middle of um, changing the dials in between. So I, that's kind of to be expected, probably requires more training in those kind of situations. Uh, here's another one, 12, 4, 6, 6, 6, um, 1, 2, 4, 6, and then guess the zero. Um, you can tell there's like a little squiggly here, uh, maybe some kind of glare or some, some sort. It, it thought, it was, a, it, thought uh, it was a six, which is uh, understandable as well. And it just kind of goes like that. Um, here's another one. It guessed, oh, it, the true prediction was an eight, but it guessed uh, a seven. And then based on the activations, um, you could see it actually tried to guess both, but it's just that the seven had a higher probability for pure reason based on the training, initial training. Uh, so based on that, um, I try to see if I increase the number of epics to 30 if the accuracy increased would increase but it seems like it would plateau just right around that range um, because when i did that after a long period of time it just increased by one percentage point so I, I i felt like it plateaued and it was just time to move on to some other techniques um, i was trying to see if data augmentation would help improve the accuracy uh, because in class um, i believe during the capital competition it, de it definitely did help them so i was assuming it would help me so for each of the images, you can see I added two additional images based on um, the rotation and the shear. And I didn't add the others because I, it, it would actually cut out some of the numbers, such as width, shift, and zoom. So uh, using these, I ran the same uh, optimal network parameters, and I ran it for 18 epics, as I did with the regular training. And I got an accuracy of zero. So that was out of the picture. So overall, what did I learn here? Um, Increasing the parameters always doesn't equate to better, better results because um, when I try to make things larger in terms of the parameter size, uh, it actually led to accuracy of zero. So bigger is not always better. You just have to test it with uh, different, different sets of parameters that's right for that situation. Um, through trial and error, I was able to increase the accuracy from 21 to 52%. And again, the kernel and the RNN size were the most important in, in uh, helping me increase uh, the accuracy. Um, and based on the predictions, it seems like a little bit more training is required because there are just some external factors that cause the wrong predictions. And um, I, I think with additional training, this, this can be resolved. Um, data augmentation, unfortunately, didn't really work out for me. Um, I, I'm still trying to understand why, but it, it brought the accuracy down to zero. Um, and in the future, there are other techniques I, I can use, uh, and, and that's, and another technique is actually where they try to locate the text using a text box first and then deciphering each of the characters uh, based on the training. But uh, it just really depends on the situation. So I may, that, I may try that next to see which one is better. Uh, well, thank you for the time. And I hope you uh, enjoyed the demo. Uh, have a nice day.